This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror, and sci-fi film called Hostile. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In an apocalyptic world, a woman named Juliet drives through a desolate land, searching for resources to help her survive. She makes sure to arm herself with a gun, ready to use it on anything and anyone if necessary. One day, she decides to stop by a gas station in hopes of finding food there, only to flee after hearing a creature growling and moving on the upper floor. In her vehicle, Juliet communicates with her friend, Harry, who wants to know if she's managed to gather food for their group of 39 people. Juliet then tells the man that the gas station is empty and that she'll take a shortcut back to their base, in a hurry to end their conversation since her battery's running low. On her way home, Juliet comes across an RV, where she finds a severely wounded man. Pointing her gun at the stranger, Juliet demands to know where the creature went, to which the old man replies he's managed to lock it in the RV. Juliet then also learns from him that there are canned goods inside his vehicle, and as she's about to go inside, the man requests that she ends his suffering. He says he doesn't want to be eaten by a monster, or as he calls it, a reaper. But Juliet doesn't waste a bullet on him. Unconcerned, Juliet tells him to choose between dying by removing his hand from his wound or living and coming with her. Having wasted enough time already, Juliet enters the RV and fights with the Reaper. The windows shatter and the vehicle shakes, but in the end, Juliet kills the creature. Exhausted, Juliet gets out of the RV and finds a man dead on the ground before taking all his valuables and stock of food. Now back on the road, Juliet quietly drives as she stares at a picture of herself with a man. However, the photo is suddenly blown away by the wind, causing Juliet to be distracted and lose control of her vehicle when she tries to retrieve it. As a result, the car flips over multiple times before Juliet blacks out. In a flashback, Juliet is seen standing in an art gallery years before the apocalyptic event. The gallery owner, Jack, approached and tried flirting with Juliet who wasn't in the mood for company. Juliet then admitted that she was only there since it was raining outside, which Jack didn't really mind. As it continued to rain, Jack urged an uninterested Juliet to look at the beautiful artwork around her, asking her to open her eyes. Back to the present, Juliet regains consciousness and feels a sharp pain from an open fracture in her leg. Juliet also realizes that she's lost her gun, seeing it a few feet away from her. Juliet then tries and fails to call for help using her radio, and with the Reapers more active at night, she must quickly find a way to retrieve her firearm. With a makeshift pull, Juliet reaches for her pistol and almost gets it, only to fail after the rods separate. In another flashback, Juliet left the gallery with Jack and ate while walking down the street falling for his joke that her food had meat in it. Of course, being a vegetarian, Juliet immediately spat out what she was eating but didn't get mad when she realized that Jack was only kidding. Juliet then accepted Jack's offer to come with him to his apartment, where she was amazed to see how beautiful his place was. The two had a few drinks and some cheese and as they talked, Juliet found it hard to open up to Jack. She even refused to tell him her name when he asked for it and suddenly insisted on leaving. But after some convincing, she eventually told him her name and Jack told her his. Later on, Jack once again laid eyes on Juliet who was with another man in a bar. Deeply curious, Jack followed Juliet and the guy outside, where he saw him paying Juliet in exchange for some substance. Jack watched as Juliet refused to be kissed by the man, and upon following her, he learned that she was a dealer. Juliet had to buy her apartment back from another dealer she was indebted to, and once inside, Jack discovered how poor Juliet's situation was. Unsure what to do, Jack tried to make small talk, but Juliet only found that irritating and snapped at him. He even tried to offer Juliet some help, but she adamantly refused and ordered him to leave. Jack then felt bad for following Juliet home, and once she injected herself with something, he realized that the woman he liked was a drug addict too. Disappointed, Jack finally left Juliet's apartment. In the present, Juliet finally manages to free her leg from being stuck on the steering wheel. After making a tourniquet for herself, Juliet washes her wound with alcohol and braves the excruciating pain, pushing her protruding bone back in place. After that, Juliet binds her wound and fixes her radio to make a call to Harry, informing him that she's injured. Juliet is utterly frustrated that no one is responding to her, but when she hears a reaper coming her way, she quickly crawls out of the car to retrieve her gun. Juliet remains quiet as she watches the reaper, ready to shoot it in case it sees her. However, the silence is shattered by Harry's call, so Juliet is forced to throw her radio outside to distract the creature. Juliet is almost sure that the Reaper will find her, but the monster suddenly hears another Reaper from a distance and walks away, leaving Juliet relieved. Now alone, Juliet replaces her bullets with new ones. Back in the past, a battered Juliet visited Jack in his apartment. Jack didn't even ask what happened and just cleaned her up, tending to her wounds before leaving her in a room to sleep. The following morning, Juliet thanked Jack and joined him for breakfast. Jack opened up to Juliet about his past, saying that he had struggled for a while in America after his parents' death but managed to adapt, telling Juliet that maybe she could do the same. Unsure, Juliet asked Jack if she could walk around the block to get some air, but Jack knew she only needed a fix. Offended, Juliet tried to leave only to find the elevator wouldn't work. 
She then demanded that Jack let her go, but Jack refused and firmly told her that he'd stay with her until she was clean. Enraged, Juliet started throwing a fit and breaking Jack's stuff, but Jack wasn't intimidated and hugged her tightly until she calmed down, eventually kissing her. In the apocalyptic era, Juliet throws some glow sticks outside to see if there's any reapers around. When nothing happens, Juliet slowly walks towards a radio, still aware of her surroundings. Suddenly, Juliet hears a sound from behind, so she throws more glow sticks in different directions until she finds the reaper on top of her car. Juliet then shoots the creature and returns to her vehicle where she quietly waits for the reaper. Then, the reaper appears from behind and yanks a window cover before reaching Juliet's foot. Struggling to break free, Juliet starts the car and presses down the accelerator, causing the wheels to move and hurt the monster. Juliet once again waits for the reaper, firing a couple shots when she sees it running, unaware that it's already inside the vehicle behind her. Startled, Juliet shoots the reaper and sends it fleeing before attempting to fix her radio with shaking hands. Juliet then tries to drink some alcohol to calm her nerves, but she realizes her flask is empty. In another flashback, Jack and Juliet are seen moving into their new house. Juliet was delighted to be with Jack, but at the same time nervous about the changes in their lives. So, Jack gently touched her face to make her smile. Jack then showed her the room their future child would have, but Juliet wasn't sure she'd be a good mother and make their son or daughter happy. However, Jack wasn't worried about that, for he believed the most important thing they needed to do was to try to make things work. Before exploring the other parts of the house, Jack asked Juliet to say that she loved him, and while she didn't say it directly, he surely could feel it. Later on, Juliet reluctantly informed Jack that she was pregnant, making the man thrilled. Unfortunately, Juliet gave birth to a stillborn baby, and the couple had to endure the pain of going home to an empty nursery room. Back in Juliet's depressing reality, she finally manages to fix her radio and reaches Harry, sharing her situation and location with him. However, Juliet and Harry don't really understand each other because of the poor signal, and Juliet only hears him talking about a locator beacon. After their conversation, Juliet gets the beacon and tries her best to follow the instructions in its manual. When the beacon finally works, Juliet starts barricading windows only to realize that a reaper is waiting for her outside. The creature attempts to get inside the vehicle as Juliet presses her foot against the window cover, eventually leaving after it gets its fingers hurt. Then, Juliet secures the cover with a rod and prepares to shoot while the creature repeatedly hits her vehicle from different directions. Suddenly, Juliet gets a call from Harry and informs him she's being attacked by a reaper, so his friend instructs her to use a flashlight on it. Harry is sure the reaper will go away since they hate bright lights, but Juliet tells him her flashlight is broken. Now that Harry and his company are about to rescue Juliet, she only needs to wait a little longer. But, the creature is far from giving up on trying to get Juliet and breaks the car's windshield. Now exposed, Juliet turns on her headlights and finally drives the monster away. Juliet then calls Harry once the Reaper is gone and asks him when they'll arrive, but the man apologetically tells her that she won't be rescued until sunrise. Back in the past, Jack scolded Juliet for always running away. He was so sick of being worried about her whenever she went missing, but Juliet wouldn't listen to Jack. She then told Jack to admit to her that he blamed her for the loss of their baby, but the man said that wasn't true. Juliet also told Jack that he pushed her into having a child even though she didn't want to, but Jack wouldn't even argue with her about that. Fed up, Jack got out of the car and intended on taking the subway finally admitting to Juliet that her being a junkie before was the reason why their baby died. Jack also ended their relationship before walking away, and as Juliet cried, she yelled at him that she didn't need him. Hours later, after having a few drinks in a bar, Juliet learned from the news that there had been an attack at the subway station, killing more than 30 people. She then answered the call that she'd been ignoring, horrified upon finding out that Jack was among those who got hurt and quickly left. Back to the present, Juliet hears a vehicle pass by and honks a horn in the hopes of getting its attention. A bike then stops and the man who approaches her promises he'll help her. Unfortunately, the man is a cannibal who is determined to kill Juliet and as he attempts to stab her, the reaper shows up and attacks the cannibal. Then, the reaper mercilessly crushes the cannibal's skull, sending his friends leaving in a hurry. After watching the reaper feast on the cannibal, Juliet checks the number of bullets she has left, slowly placing the gun under her chin. As Juliet contemplates killing herself, she suddenly remembers how Jack looked at the hospital on the night of the subway attack. His larynx and trachea were burned because of the gas used in the attack, leaving him unable to speak. When Juliet entered Jack's room, she immediately apologized to him for what happened, and Jack had only touched the thick plastic separating them. Using a whiteboard and a marker, a weak Jack told Juliet he loved her and asked her to never give up, and as Juliet thinks of it, she suddenly puts the gun down. Determined to survive, Juliet takes a flare and two fuel containers out of the vehicle, dousing one with gasoline. She then lights the flare and waves it around to lure the reaper out, and when it does, she leads it to the container she's prepared a while ago. When the creature stands on the fuel-soaked ground, Juliet shoots the can to kill it with the explosion, but the creature survives and escapes. 
Once again in danger, Juliet keeps her guard up and looks for the Reaper, unaware that it's behind her. The Reaper then grabs Juliet and causes her to drop her gun, so she quickly crawls back inside the car. However, the creature grabs her leg and tries to pull her out, making her wound bleed a lot. Juliet then continues fighting back, but the Reaper pulls her out of her vehicle and throws her to the ground. With the creature approaching her, Juliet uses the gun she's managed to pick up and shoots the Reaper twice, crying once she's realized that her problem is over. As Juliet looks to the stars, the bitter memory of Jack's passing away suddenly fills her mind. When the sun finally rises, the creature suddenly moves and crawls towards Juliet, but she fails to shoot it since she has no bullets left. Juliet hurriedly reloads her gun, scared that she might die at any minute. Now that the Reaper is on top of her, Juliet can only stay still as it gently touches her face, making her realize it's Jack. Juliet then remembers the day that she met Jack, where the man told her he believed in fate and that the universe had a way of bringing people together. Being a skeptical person, Juliet asked Jack what he'd do if she left him at that moment. So, as a grand romantic gesture, Jack closed the gallery and decided to walk home with her. Going back to the present, Juliet cries as she finally tells Jack that she loves him. Juliet then embraces Jack while leaning her head against his, and now that she's finally found her way back to him, she decides that together, they should go to the afterlife. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.